Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Amelie and welcome to episode 20 of my photography Lightroom and Photoshop tips. Last week, we continued on timelapse photography and I showed you how to do some pan and zoom effect. That was the final result that we got. This week, we're going to continue exploring timelapse photography using this amazing, amazing plugin, the LR timelapse plugin, to do some bright brightness and temperature changes. For example, you start your time lapse very warm and you go cold or very cold and you go warm or very bright and you go dark and it's going to calculate anything that's needed to make this in Lightroom. Let me show you how we do this. Okay, so welcome to this last part on the time lapse uh, retouching techniques. So, so I'm back in Lightroom and this is a complete different time lapse that we did than the first two episodes, the first two shows about time lapse. This one is from the um, uh, the, the roof of uh, Montmartre. It's a view that you have from uh, Montmartre, huh, which is pretty high up, and you can see, you know, most of the rooftop of Paris. The only thing is, I, I was trying to get clever on this time lapse, and I instead of doing it in manual, I did it in the um, AV mode. And uh, you will see that this will bring a problem because if I look in the info, you see it starts here at f4 at one eighth of a second. And as I go uh, further down in time, and now it's at one fifth of a second, the exposition changes. Uh, okay, now this is a third of a second, etc., etc. And I'll show you the problem that this is going to give us a bit later on. So let me go back to LR time lapse. First thing you do is initialize. You, every time you start a new time lapse, you locate your folder here and you click on initialize. Okay. Then I'm going to define the reference area. So I'm going to click on this. Okay. Click and drag inside the preview, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to do like the last one, a bit of sky, a bit of ground. Okay, and it's going to recalculate the average brightness value of the photo. All right, and uh, okay, perfect. And uh, now I'm going to go into keyframes and create keyframes even spaced. Okay, two, just like we did last week. Now the problem with um, the, this thing, I'll show you a bit later. Okay, now that I've done the keyframe, I'm just going to save the XMP. The sequence has already been deflickered uh, because I pressed the deflickered. Do you want to remove the existing flicker? Recommended? Yes. Okay, you won't get that message. I, I, you have that message because I, I, did, I did try this time lapse. But, you know, all you do is initialize, define the reference error, put in your two keyframes with, uh, you know, keyframes and um, create even space keyframe and save the XMP file. Now let's go back to Lightroom. Okay, uh, command A to select everything, right click, metadata, read metadata from file. Okay, so now it's gonna read the XMP metadata. Now last week we, 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 ha we played with JPEG, this week it's raw files, and um, which is cool because we can do some serious tweaking on the raw files. So once it's finished the reading the XMP metadata, I'm gonna filter with one star so that I will get my two uh, keyframes, my two, uh, this is my starting frame, okay? And this is my last frame. So I really went into the night. That's why I choose the AV mode so that it would recalculate the exposure. Okay, so, Let's uh, do some tweaking here. One thing I forgot to mention last week is that uh, that's what the um, uh, the person who created the all LR time lapse software, Mr. Gunther Wegner. Uh, I read his whole book, and uh, on the book it says that you need to not so much use the highlight shadows, white and black slider too much on Lightroom 4, like do not push it too much. Last week I pushed them a lot and it still worked out fine. So we just have to be careful on that. So, but I'm still gonna open up the shadows a little bit in the idea, the idea is not to go the whole way, but just like this, I'm still gonna bring down the highlights, uh, boost the contrast, okay, and boost the clarity. That's important for me because it's gonna give some more value there. And then I'm gonna use uh, the gradients, okay, for the sky. Now on the sky, 
uh, if you put your mouse over it, you will see that there is already one and two, which is um, the software, I mean, the, the plugin already created two graded filter on your photo, on, on the first photo and the second photo. Uh, that is, uh, but there are empties, they don't do anything. So you can just either erase one or select one. So I'm going to select the top one if you want to. Okay, first I'm going to delete the bottom one because I don't need it. I'm going to select the top one. Okay, and I'm just going to change the temperature. I'm going to make the sky a bit more blue here on the top, you know, just for the hell of it. And um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, you yeah, know, let me get that filter back. I'm maybe going to, I'm going to brighten up the sky also a little bit because I want to start with a bright blue sky type of thing. Uh, maybe go down here a little bit more on the filter. Okay. And, uh, and on the exposure, I'm going to brighten up the whole photo just a little bit. So we start with a pretty uh, bright sky, maybe change the temperature. I want to make this a bit more blue. So we start with a pretty bright sky. And then I'm going to go to the last photo. Uh, first, I'm going to select both. And I'm going to sync the settings of the first one to the last one. Okay, so synchronize this. So now all we did on the first one is going to be on the last one. So I'm going to select the last one. But I'm going to change a few things. First thing, I'm going to take that filter back that I created, which is here. And I'm going to make the exposure go down this time. And I'm going to make my sky even more reddish you know just so we have a major shift in the sky okay like we did last week all right and um, then i'm gonna bring down the overall exposure okay so it's gonna go from bright daylight to night okay clarity is the same everything else is the same so i just changed the exposure and the white balance in the filter and on the overall photo Okay, now I'm going to right click metadata, save metadata to files. So these two photo and on which are completely different are saved into the external XMP file. I go into my LR time lapse. I reload. Uh, you have unsaved metadata. Do you want to save? No. I just want to reload. So it's going to reload. Uh, it's going to reload this. Okay. And then I'm going to make my auto transition. So now it's going to make, uh, you know, all, all the settings that I have done, it's going to make them, you know, on a very um, uh, gradient type of thing. And then I'm going to save the XMP file, go back into Lightroom. So the whole idea was just, you know, to make the auto transition and to save it. So now I'm going to go back in Lightroom, take out my star so that I have everything selected. Press Command A and metadata read metadata from file so now it's going to read the metadata okay and i'm going to go into um, uh, once it's done reading the all the xmp metadata okay i'm going to go into slideshow as usual click on export video and i'm going to export my video um, making sure i'm at 25 frames per second here 25 frames per second and uh, I'm going to save it here um, that's the first one I need replace because I've already done it and uh, okay I'm going to pause this and see how it looks okay so here is the result so it goes from very cold to warm but there's something bad happening it's called flickering see the fact that I shot in AV mode you see you have this sort of like a you know, yeah, just flickering on the photo, you know, it goes bright, it goes dark, but on a very high frequency, so it makes the whole thing shake. Now, you can correct that in um, in LR time-lapse uh, plugin, but uh, it's still limited, it doesn't, it works good, but, um, you know, I really had a lot of uh, exposure issue with this time-lapse because I shot in AV mode, so I'll show you how to correct it. It's not the best result in the world, but it, but it can help. So here I'm into the LR time-lapse. All I'm gonna do now is click on deflicker and XMP save. It says this sequence already has been deflickered. Do you want to remove the existing deflicker? Uh, no, I don't wanna remove it. Okay, I saved it. 
and and that's all you need to do then go back into Lightroom so now that we have this difficult option command A to select everything right click metadata uh, read the metadata from file so it's going to read the metadata and it's going to try to correct this flickering problem um, you will see it's an improvement but it's not the you know the best in the world because the best is to shoot in manual so you won't have any trouble with that and um, yeah so now let's go into slideshow and like export our video okay I'm gonna take I'm gonna call this the same name I'm just gonna write a D at the end for deflicker export replace I've already tried this okay let's put on on a break and see how it goes okay so now let me show you this one so see how it flickers less how it's like it's more stable it doesn't shake as much as the other one let me show it to you again okay it's uh yeah it's it could have been better if i would have shot in manual but uh let me show you again the first one we did uh you will see it's you know it's more vibrating uh you know than the other one i, I don't know if you can really see the difference in the video but believe me i can see the difference i show you again the last one and has less vibration and less deflickering but i'm not sure you can really see it on the video anyways uh, there is still a lot more to do with this uh, software i'm just exploring it but i wanted to share these tips on making lightroom on, on sorry on making time lapse with lightroom and only lightroom with this software which is basically a lightroom plugin so i hope you like that and um before we go back to the studio i just want us to show you as every week that if you go on my website photosearch.com slash apps here you can get all my apps on lightroom and photoshop there are about two hours courses for about ten dollars you can download directly uh the download the training or you can go also on the uh, app store if you want to see the iphone or ipad version and if you go on the podcast item here on the menu you can you will get all the past episodes uh the links for all the past episodes and you can also purchase all the raw files that goes with each episode for three euros which helps support this podcast last but not least if you're watching this on youtube don't forget to subscribe okay thank you guys and let's go back to the studio okay guys so i hope you like that tutorial i think time lapse photography is an amazing um work and an amazing art so i really encourage you to do it this week's inspiration is the website f-stopper an amazing website to have a lot of info on photography and it's a specific selection of time lapse that they selected which i think is amazing some of them are just breathtaking i wish i could do some time lapse like this one day voila that's it for this week and see you next week for new adventures wow, 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 wow.